Hey everyone, Duke Nugget 3 d here with another video for you guys, and today I'm going to be doing a military surplus orientated video instead of my usual gas mask reviews that this channel is mainly focused on. So today I just want to do a bit of an overview on how I took a standard DH-132B combat vehicle crewman's helmet and convert it into a Soha Ops Corps gunfighter style high cut helmet, you know, whatever you want to call it, I guess, and just sort of discuss the pros and cons of doing this. Now I very well, this is for my personal kit obviously, and I very well could have just forked over the money for a brand new fast or just generic commercial high cut helmet, but I'm a, I'm a big sucker for the old gen stuff and I like the idea of you know, SOCOM units that just took CVC shells and j jury rigged them into high cut helmets. And I just wanted to experiment that with that for myself. So I'm going to be detailing how I did that in this video, not so much doing a historical review. So obviously the first thing I needed was a DH-132B helmet. And luckily at the time of wanting to do this project, there was a seller on eBay and there might still be, I could be wrong. And th th by the time this video is being watched later, they could very well be out of them, but there was a seller on eBay that was selling DH-132B shells on their own for a total of $50, which is an absolute steal considering I've seen DH-132B shells in absolute shit condition going for the 130 mark. So that was a very big uh, steal on that, which is actually why I bought two from the same seller here. Um, one for the modification, obviously, and one for just to have an original DH-132B shell. And so the first thing obviously is acquiring the shell. You could just, you know, have a helmet that you want to modify. You don't necessarily have to have the shell alone, although I recommend trying to find a shell on its own rather than, uh, you know, messing up a complete helmet. And forgive me for the awkward lighting. So the first issue that you will run into when making this modification is the interior, interior of the shell. As you can see, there is a large pile fastener patch attached to the interior of the shell, and this is to integrate with the CVC liner, obviously, but it is not conducive to using a standard ACH style liner pad system. So this is the first thing that needed to go. And this is probably one of the more difficult parts of the modification because this adhesive is really strong. And so you'll need to have um, you could probably melt it with like acetone or something of the, or even mineral spirits. Although I did not want to damage the interior resin lining or potentially screw up the aramid fibers. So what I did was I used some goo gone and carefully peeled that all up. And um, it unfortunately did chip away at some of the surface resin of the, uh, the Kevlar. But this, this ended up getting remedied later on and I'll discuss how I did that. And the next thing I needed to do was obviously drill out or ream out the size of the front um, strap holes after removing the CVC straps here and then I also needed to add some holes on the back of the shell for a four-point ACH style chin strap. Um, what I ended up doing for that is I see most of the people that I see making um, modifications of these helmets will just say to take a drill bit and drill right through it and you, you really want to be careful about what drill bits you're using for this because I found that really the only acceptable drill bit to drill through aramid fiber Kevlar is solid carbide or tungsten carbide drill bits because those, um, while they're very expensive, they will basically go straight through the Kevlar like soft wood. Like a standard steel drill bit, even like the best quality ones, it will just spin and generate a lot of heat and it won't really get you anywhere but a lot of fraying and a lot of frustration. So definitely spend the $30 on the two uh, solid carbide drill bits that you need. And I was very lucky because my friend Moulage definitely had a lot, had a lot of, of like he had like about $500 in Amazon gift cards that he needed to blow on random stuff and he was very kind enough to just pick me up a couple of solid carbide drill bits for like 30 bucks. Um, and I used a 1 8 inch drill bit, excuse me, no, a 1 quarter inch drill bit on the front two holes because those need to be reamed out larger for the, obviously the ACH style screws. And then on the rear, I started off, since these were, it, there was no holes pre-drilled on the back. I needed to use a 1 8 inch drill bit to drill a pilot hole, and then I reamed them out the rest of the way with the 1 quarter inch bit. And one thing I should note is that if you're wanting to install a rail system on your shell, um, there are very few railing systems that actually will work with the CVC cut, unfortunately. So um, most of the generic ones, you will probably want to atop, attach to the top bolt here, uh, and then you will want to definitely before you drill the rear strap you'll want to mark out where that rear 
hole on the railing system kind of centers itself. So obviously I, I wasn't sure if I wanted a railing system or not. So I just, I didn't end up uh, getting one before I drilled the holes. So that's definitely something you want to take into consideration if you're wanting to make a CVC modification is, do I want a rail system on this? Which most of you will probably say yes. So definitely buy the rails before you drill the holes. Um, obviously with me, that's not too big of an issue. I'm probably going to be running a set of Comtac 2 style headphones underneath this and the headband really isn't all that obtrusive to my knowledge. Uh, again, this is stuff I'll figure out later, but I just built it basically like your standard old gen field modified CVC helmet. So that it works well enough for me. So the, after drilling the holes, obviously you're going to want to protect the Kevlar from moisture because as Aramid Kevlar soaks up moisture, it begins to degrade and it loses its ballistic properties. So what I did is I just got a cheap, um, uh, epoxy resin like they use for wood finishing and I basically sealed all the holes with epoxy resin and even coated the interior of the shell just to protect that area where I peeled away the velcros to make sure there wasn't any exposed Kevlar and everything is all completely sealed up and the next thing I did I'm going to remove it from the head here obviously move that out of the way um, was you're going to need to have a liner system of some sort. And I know there are much better liner systems out there. I just bought a really cheap Sec Pro ACH style liner pad system, which works well enough for me. I may replace this in the future, but uh, just for a demonstration and the cheapest way out, this is what I got. Um, so obviously that's pretty simple affairs. Just stick the Velcro inside and place the liners how you want them. And obviously uh, for the chin strap, I just have this generic Chinese made um, X Nape four point chin strap. Uh, you could use something different if you want. Uh, that's just what I got because it was uh, available and cheap. And as for the Velcro patches, uh, I just used a generic Chinese uh, nine piece Velcro set. I didn't end up using all the Velcro and I actually modified the rear patch because um, it was angled so that it would fit with a set of rails. And I obviously cut a hole for the existing snap on the back of the shell. And you may notice these um, retention straps here. These are actually homemade goggle retention straps that I actually made out of the pre-existing CVC liner retention straps. I'm going to be ending up replacing these because I want to run a set of Bali X800 goggles with this shell. And given the wide strap of those and most modern military goggles, it, unless you're running some sun dust and wind goggles, this setup really doesn't work all that well for anything else. But for the time being, it's kind of nice how I have it. And it's just a placeholder and um, just good enough for what it is. And on the front here, you are probably noticed by now is that I have a um, pretty typical NVG Rhino mount. Um, I don't know the exact model or designation. In fact, the brand name, I think it's Norotos. Uh, could be wrong. I got this a surplus. I got this one used surplus, and I actually was going to use a a tensile strap to mount it, but um, the original one that I got um, unfortunately broke in the postage. So I decided, you know what? Screw it. I'm literally just going to drill a, a fifth hole on the front of the shell and mount this thing that way, which is ultimately the better option anyways, because you want that extra security. So that's what I did, and I sealed the hole up with some more epoxy resin, and it's all good to go. And that's basically the remainder of what I did to this kit and everything else is just going to be all aesthetic modifications. It's not going to be anything that really modifies the structural integrity of the helmet as opposed to drilling the holes and so on and so forth. So that's basically all I did to this shell. Um, there's more that I could do to it and there's, but I'm pretty pleased with it. Again, I'm probably going to replace those retention straps when I get the goggles and I don't plan on getting NVGs anytime soon, but it is nice to have that mount there for the time being. And that's basically it. If you have any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns, drop them down in the comments below. I'm Duke Nuka3D, and I'll see you all later.